Adventure. Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. Once again, the magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. A week. A whole week back in civilization. You don't know what it means, you two. To be in a city again, to see streets instead of jungle. Ah, this food you've placed before me, civilized food. Yet it frightens me. What did you expect me to serve you? Stuffed tiger tail? After all, how many people fresh from Sumatra do you think we get? I don't pay any attention to her, Mr. Uh... And yet I can't get used to civilization. In spite of what the archipelago is like, death at your shoulder constantly and the earthquake, the nights of remembering that... You said something about gold, mister. Uh, uh, just what is your gold? name? Gold? Gold for fools. Just a trick. I didn't find gold. A smart trader filled a shotgun full of gold pellets and shot them against a rock. Sold me a piece of the jungle, and I thought I'd struck it rich. I even wrote home about it. To a woman I used to know how I discovered gold. <laughs> yeah, they've got sharpies in Sumatra, too. Let me tell you about the time I met a guy who called himself Trader Melvin... I was new to Sumatra. He tried to sell me futures and elephant tusks, and I almost bought... Uh, another time, Mr. Shannon. I have to leave. <laughs> What's your hurry? A young woman, Mr. Val. Not as lovely as you, but as kind. I met her at the telegraph office on Paseo Alvarez. Only the works there helped me. Tonight she's going to show me around Havana. I want to see it before I leave for New York. Adios and thanks. Take it easy. Come back before you sail. George! George Carson. Lewis! Lou! What are you doing? In the car, George. So you'll live. What? So you'll live. So I won't have to kill you in the streets. The moon shines bright, the sea pounds, and it's like the beat of my heart. My heart really pounds for you, Carson. Lewis, I don't understand what's... You're a pathetic man, Carson, a tragic man. I'll bet kiddies and old ladies are going to weep for you. What do you want of me, Lewis? What can I give you? Not what you can give me, boy adventurer, what you can take away. We were friends, partners. Now you scratch my back with a knife to bring me here. I would have brought you anyhow. Why? <laughs> Why? You made a mistake, friend partner. That's your shack over there, Carson? Yes, I wanted a place like that, lonely, apart, so I could adjust, take civilization easy until... There's a light in it, someone moving around. Well, that's Subi, that's... Subi! Stay close, dead man. Subi! You want to die with your mouth open? I make a gesture, die how you want. Ah! Welcome to civilization, dead man. <laughs> Hey, Slate, can I come in? Sure. Sit down, sailor. Be with you in a minute. As soon as I finish cleaning this gun. You see this gun? It was with me in Sumatra. You see this notch right here on the stock? You know what it's for? Uh, I better read this to you first. Then you can regale me. That is, if you feel like regaling after you've heard it. Well, what's the matter? Let me read it to you. In the morning paper... Unknown man washed up on beach near Morrow Castle. An unidentified man was found late last night by fishermen who were returning to Havana. The man had been stabbed to death. He was six feet tall, middle-aged, weather-beaten, 
skin yellowed as if he had been taking quinine against malaria. He was... Hey, that could have been our friend from Sumatra. Let me... Sit still, I'll get it. Yes? What? You'd better open the door, Slate. What's the matter? He's seven feet tall. He wears earrings in his ears. I don't believe I saw him. And he wants to come in. What's unusual about that? I'll get it. Hello. Come on in. I thank you. I am Soupy. Slate Shannon. This is Miss Duval. It is my pleasure. As long as you're in town, we're glad you stopped in. I am of the tribe of Djibouti. As if we didn't know. That's a Sumatran tribe, isn't it, Subi? I think I remember a tribe with markings on the Cali River, right? Indeed it is, Mr. Shannon. Slate, if he's from Sumatra, how come the language is so easy for me? Until today, I've always had trouble with the dialect. I was educated in a mission school, Miss Duval. A question, if you please. Sure. A man came to you. He was from Sumatra? That's right. I needed to know that before I kill you! Sailor! Sailor, the gun! Yeah, yeah! I'll teach you to mess with Slate as long as I hold a gun in my hand. <sighs> nice going, Sailor. I'll get up, Subi. Now, what's all this about? Next time, I will not be so foolish. When I return next time... You will die, my promise to you. I hardly know how to behave with you, Senor Shannon, Senorita Duval. You come to a humble policeman of your own free will. <laughs> Shall I order flags in Havana, rumbas in the street? What is the etiquette? Oh, a fat reward would be dainty. Ah, reward. Reward for what? That you bent a gun barrel over the head of a native from Sumatra who could very well be a fig of your imagination? Fig, he says. Take a look at this gun barrel. That you'll find the head print of a tattooed Sumatran on it. I better still take a look at me, LaSalle. Nothing under seven feet tall could work me over like this. Well, that's not counting the pygmy in the jungle who... Not counting the pygmy who... Hey, leave me alone, will you, sailor? I try to explain to the policeman how the guy he found knifed on the beach was a man we fed, traded exciting adventures with. His rang true, anyway. You don't believe me, sailor. You know what you can... Please. And for these kindnesses, the deceased told you perhaps who he was? Only that he'd been in Sumatra, got taken for a phony gold find, had the ground shaken up under him in an earthquake, got fever, acquired a King Kong who promised me a grave. A man like that shouldn't be hard to trace, LaSalle. And once you know who he is, maybe you... Find his killer? Hmm. This we intend to do. Even if we should discover you were the murderer, Senor Shannon. And now, adios. And thank you for the gorgeous entertainment. Oh, come on, sailor. The man doesn't appreciate us. He appreciates me. Didn't you notice the respectful way he kept staring at me? Yeah. Her? Next time we call on the police, sailor, wear your overalls, huh? Come on. You tell LaSalle a seven-foot lad threatened you with death, and LaSalle doesn't even bat an eye. You're not liked, Slate. No? I've got news for you, kid. I... Mr. Shannon? You're the thrilling Mr. Shannon? Oh, why, yes, indeedy, miss. I am he. You look as if I can help a girl like you. You can. You will. A man from Sumatra can bring us so close together. You could do that, huh? At my place. So rest for there. Coming? Well, as soon as I get rid of... Uh, <clears throat> pardon me. You understand how it is, sailor? A lonely girl needs help, wants to be close. Sure, I understand. You go ahead, Slate. A little bus for old time's sake. Anything you want, honey. The red one just stopped over there on the corner. You'd better run for it. Your friend was wrong. The hurt she gave your feelings has hardly been in the way, has it? Made it more thrilling, baby. You know, pain mixed with delight. It's a thing a man dreams about, works for. Well, I'm a fortunate fellow. I cast my bread on the waters and... And get me, Vera Shea. You don't like the name? Call me whatever you want. <laughs> oh, I will. Give us time. Only there's a slight fee, Slate Mine. A mountain of gold on a Sumatra waist. Oh, that? 
Oh, uh, oh, you mean the gold he told me about? Well, forget it, baby. It, it isn't there. The Sumatra con artist shot a hill full of gold pellets, sold it to our boy. Just because it bothers me. Who was our boy? He's dead. We ought to mention his name. He loved me once. Was it five years ago? Loved me so fine, he wrote he'd found gold. You killed him for it, didn't you, Slate? He told you about the gold and you knifed him, let his blood run on the beach. I admire you for that, Slate. Tell me where it is, this mountain of gold, and I'll admire you to its very peak. thing like that could break up the nice things we're building, Vera. You know how it is. Money is the root of it. But don't walk away from me. What I got to say should be whispered. Keep talking to me about money, Slate. Your gun makes me tongue-tied, lover. Put it... Ah! Please. I play with guns, Slate. Known for it. You just had the pleasure. <laughs> you like me better with short sideburns, huh? This way you're alive. 24 hours, Slate. Bring me the location of the gold. Or next time I zero in on your eyes. <laughs> hey, you know, I just thought of a name for you, and I like it. Wait up for me, lover. I know, it's real poetic, Slate. A man with short sideburns ought to come out to his boat and think about it. I recommend it. But why won't you talk to me? Oh, come on. Put your singe against my shoulder and tell me all about it. Now get off the boat, sailor. I want to go for a sail, and I don't need you to louse it up. Louse it up? Who do you think you're... Slate, company. Seven feet of it. I told you I would come back, Mr. Shannon. Put away that knife, Subie. We've got to talk. We've got to... Goodbye, Mr. Shannon. Subie, don't. Don't throw. <gasps> Sailor. Sailor, help me. Help. Our stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, and the second act of our story. Now, what's that, Sailor? What? You just lie still till I open this. It's a surprise. See? Surprise. I sure am. What is it? It's eight tortillas I cooked for you. One for every day of the week. This one with the carabanza beans, that's for Sunday. I know how you don't like hospital cooking, so I thought I'd... I get a crooked dagger pitched through my shoulder and you cook me eight tortillas. I'll never forget you for this, sailor. Go on, eat one. This one on top is today's. Look, sailor. Havana's finest surgeon stitched me up. Havana's most beautiful nurse can't wait till I push her night buzzer. You want me to louse all that for one of your home-cooked tortillas? I appreciate your cooking things for me. I appreciate your kind thought, trying to ease a wounded man's arm. Sorry to see you feeling so well, Slate. It really hurts. <laughs> now, don't pout, sailor. Someday into your life will come a man who... He came. He just went out. You tell us Sal what happened to me? Mm-hmm. We shook hands over it, patted each other on the back. He doesn't care that a seven-foot English-speaking ape carved a slice out of me? The Sal's different. Besides, the wound will go good with your new hair, Bob. That does it. I thought I had a good thing here. Nice surrounding, gentle treatment from kind hands. Now I got to leave it. Get my clothes out of that closet, sailor. Just because I wish you were dead, don't go crazy, Slate. You're not well enough to walk out of here. You're not... Get my clothes. Give me a shoulder for a crutch. I'll show you how well I am. Get them, sailor. My last request. <laughs> I figured you wouldn't be able to think of anything to say, Louie. Vera. How do you say my name? Surprise? 
right? Happy? Come in. Why are you in Havana? I got a wire from George. And I thought a thing. If George sent me a wire, he'd send you one. I didn't want George to get as far as New York, so I thought another thing. You didn't want George in New York either. George found a lot of gold in Sumatra, Louis. Now, where is he? You know he's dead. Why? Because you found out where the gold is and killed him? Gold? Why do you keep asking about gold? Five years ago, George wrote he'd found it. Then I didn't hear from him again till last week. I thought he was dead, Vera. You remember that earthquake in Sumatra? Right after that, no word from him. But the gold, who cares about that? Me. I care a lot. Put away the gun, Vera. I care a whole lot, Louie. Just talk, will you? George was my partner. He left for Sumatra. Hunting trip. He never came back. The business grew. Thousands. Hundreds of thousands. All right. No hysteria, huh? It's the truth. That's why I didn't want George to come back. Half is his. Now it's mine. Part of it. I'm taking his place, Louie. Half. Maybe more. I'll think about it. We've got to be careful, Vera. George brought a native with him, a giant, and he's been talking to... Yeah, I know. Slate Shannon. Those people bother you, Louie? Ah, oh, Louie, they don't bother me. They can be gotten to, one way or another. Bar Mr. Slate, he liked to play game with the finger of fate. He feed the mouth of a nameless man and get in return man's corpse in the sand. Then he go to police with open heart after seven foot giant tried to break him apart. Then a lady she hang two bullets near his ears and a knife is thrown a career of tears. Oh, don't weep, King. Our Slate boy lives for stuff like that. Don't you, Slate? Sure. Can't wait for the day I die. Pardon me for thinking so, Mr. Slate, but you are what is known to us amateur psychoanalysts as... Uh... <laughs> wait, King. I'll, I'll draw up an amateur couch. Oh, don't turn up your nose at a free treatment, Slate. You're a boy who can use one. Go on, King. What's Slate known as among you fellows? As a mayhem prone, Miss Sailor, we have long searched for the exact category. We have found it. Mayhem prone. You see, Slate? You see what you are? You see what people are saying about you behind your back? Now let's ask this customer, sailor. Let's ask him what... Pardon me, sir. Before you register for a room, would you mind taking a good look at me? I want you to... I have, Mr. Shannon. I've looked at you on more than one occasion. And I find it's worth a thousand dollars. Huh? Hey, you hear that, sailor? Gentleman looks at me and it's worth a grand to him. A thousand dollars, Mr. Shannon, because I once saw you with a man from Sumatra. Because I want his name. Oh. The man from Sumatra, huh? You mean the seven-foot one or the pocket size edition? The man whom you were kind to. The dead man. A thousand dollars for his name. An easy day's work, Mr. Shannon. I could throw in the name of the big one, too. What's your offer on that? Oh, take it easy, Slate. For a grand, we can come up with the name the gentleman wants. Point of information. What makes a dead man's name worth so much to you? Say it as a whim. A curiosity. Say it troubles me. An anonymous man finds death on a Look, beach. Look, Buster, I can twist it out of you and for nothing. No, you can't, Mr. Shannon, because I can so easily forget what I asked of you. So easily go to the police for the injury you contemplate upon me. Let him go, Slate. Thank you, dear lady. If you should happen to remember his name just by chance, I am at the Florida Apartments. Louis Weigman. Try. Think of a thousand. Remember a name so easy for you. Adios. Slate? Get your hat, sailor. I know somebody who might remember a name. That's right, Angel. This man told me about a girl who worked in the telegraph office. He said her name was Lolita. You oh, see? And this is still my name. But what man are you talking about? He's been in Havana about a week. He's from Sumatra. Oh, see. See, I know of whom you speak. We had a date for fiesta, but he did not appear, so I went with another one. How'd you happen to meet him? Here, right at this place. I helped him to send the telegram. To whom? You're from the police. That's right. You're a liar. You're too pretty. Pretty? Him? What you need, Lolita, is a goodbye focal. 
To me, he's pretty. Therefore, he's not of the police. Therefore, I will tell him what he wishes to know. Two telegrams he sent, both to New York. One to Vera Shea in Island of Staten. Another to a Senor Louis Vigran in care of Carson and Vigran Company. Both read the same as you see. Amin Havana will arrive in New York in about two weeks. And signed with the initial G. Now, let's go, sailor. Well, genius, what did we find out on this fine night? That Louis Vigran knew who the man from Sumatra was. All he wanted to find out from me is if I knew he... Sailor, duck! Are you all right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, well, come on, let's get out of here. Whoever was in that car is liable to be back down this alley. Mr. Shannon? Huh? Oh, it's you. Please, Slade, he's bleeding. Yeah. Hey, what happened to you, Suby? Two hours ago, it happened. I tried to seek out the killers of George Carson. Because George Carson was to me a brother. Oh, so that's his name. George Carson. An earthquake in Sumatra. He helped me. In spite of his injury, he helped me. Stayed. Lived with my people. Who shot you? Wait. Wait only a little. I am sorry for what I did to you. I followed to tell you. To tell you. Uh, uh, he's dead, sailor. I'm sorry. I really am. Let's tell the police about it. Now we can tell a man I know. He's got a thousand bucks for us. <laughs> It's you, Shannon. Tell me what quickly, then go away. Inside, Buster. Close the door, sailor. Hey, Slate. Look what's at the end of that long cigarette holder. That skinny girl. Hi, Slats. I gave you 24 hours, Slate. Did you bring me what I want to know? I brought you both something. I don't need it anymore. We still need the thousand. The man you killed, his name is George Carson. Carson and Vigrant. He was a good guy, Louie. Why'd you have to kill him? I don't mind, Shannon. A guy like you ought to go out knowing why. Carson was my partner. He should have stayed in the South Seas. I don't need a partner anymore. Don't say that like you mean it, Louie. You've got a partner. Me. I know, I know. You brought me a packet of goodies, too, huh, Slate? Unwrap it for me. Show me. Ask your partner. Ask Louie. He knows where the gold is, too. Do you, Louie? Vera. Sure he does. Carson told us he wrote Louie all about it. Louie! Vera, for the love of... Because he lied to me, Shannon. You've seen me work before. You know he's dead. <laughs> well, you're good, Vera. You really are. One thing. How come you missed me from that car? I could have had you hurt, too. The way I got that Subi. In your case, it was just a gentle reminder that you didn't have much time. About the gold, huh? About the gold. Carson found it, didn't he? He found it. You and me, Slate. Her, too? You and me. You already got a sideburn, curls, miss. How much more do you want? Hey, sis. You mean me, ma'am? You, sailor. You've got to go, sis. Look, honey. Two dolls like us? We can divvy up a fellow without that gun you're holding. She's got to go, doesn't she, Slate? Right now. You'd do it, too, wouldn't you, Slate? Turn your back on him and... Who do you think you're pushing, fool? Watch out, sailor. I'll take that gun, no, Vera. Let go of me! Let go of me! How about you? Let... Throw a sailor at you and you still got wind to talk. No, let... Now, drop it. No. Now, pick it up, sailor. Hold her still, Slate. I'll get you back a pair of sideburn curls. <laughs> now, just point it at her, baby. The police will hate us if we bring them damaged goods. <laughs> Hey, 
Slate, where are you? Here I am. Hey, I want to talk to you. How come I'm darning my own socks? I'll tell you later. Stand up. What for? Stand up. <coughs> Put this apple on your head. You going crazy, sailor? Today I don't need an apple on my head. Oh, humor me. You mean you're going to try to shoot this apple off my head? Well, girls who are handy with guns seem to impress you. I've been practicing. You don't have to shoot an apple off my head to impress me. Just come here. Closer, sailor. Yeah, that's fine. Well, what do I have to do? Just bring an apple like this every day. My, they're tasty. Sailor, I'm very impressed with you. <laughs> And so, our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall together in Bold Venture. Bold Venture.